Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywald, and before we get started with today's Step Up episode, I want to thank our very cool sponsor, Event Espresso. Event Espresso is an event registration and management plugin for WordPress. It will turn your WordPress site into an effective event management tool. So check out Event Espresso at eventespresso.com. Look at the demo, check out the features between the free and premium version, and see which one is right for you. Event Espresso, our wonderful sponsor, thank you so much. And let's get to this episode of Step Up. Hi everyone, this is Sherry Bell Raywalt, your host of this episode of Step Up, the video interview program in which I interview business peeps who are moving their companies forward step by step. That means they have lots of tips and tools to share with us to move our companies forward as well. Today's guest is Scott Cowley, an SEO manager at SEO.com. Scott is going to share with us his tips and tools for not only planning an effective contest, but evaluating that contest and keeping that engagement going. And yes, I even got Scott to share his tips for how he wins so many contests. So welcome to this episode of Step Up, Scott. We can't wait to hear your tips. So my guest today is Scott Cowley, who is an SEO manager with SEO.com here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And he is going to tell us the ins and outs of online contests. Now, Scott has one a lot of contests. I know from talking with him earlier that he has entered at least a hundred contests and he has some very strategic ways he does that via SEO and he's going to tell us those things. But Scott, the reason that I'm interviewing you today is not only because you win so many contests but that you recently had your own personal contest, a Christmas sort of give back contest to your social media community and it was based on a five dollar package of bacon and you got, I wrote it down here, you got 145 tweets and 68 comments all in two days. So you intrigue me. I want to know how you did it. But first up, let's just get you to tell us what you do for SEO.com specific to SEO because I know it's huge. What really, if I came to you, what is it you would be able to do for me? So I work for SEO.com as an SEO manager. And what that means is I I'm responsible for a couple of dozen different websites um, that companies own that they want to show up better in search engines because showing up at the top of Google when you type for something can mean a lot of money for a lot of businesses. So what I do is, you know, I help identify which keywords are going to be best for the client. I help identify what needs to change on a website in order to be optimized for those keywords. And then we work on building up the credit website um, through off-page optimization, which is building links from other websites uh, to to the uh, to the website, and and all of that combined helps um, helps clients move up the rankings and eventually get um, really good revenue and returns because they're more visible. Okay, so for me. Um you and I were talking earlier and you suggested that I as a small business owner and anyone who's watching this video we can pretty much learn what we need to learn for on-page SEO I think is what you called it so um, the book that you recommended tell, tell me that again sure so I the, the book I recommend is called search engine optimization a visual blueprint by Christopher Jones and that's Christopher with a K um, that's not what I learned on personally. I read SEO for Dummies. I'm sure a lot of people who are trying to learn SEO for the first time and feel like dummies, <laughs> you know, they're, they're going to pick that up. Yeah. Uh, that's very digestible, and it was good for me. It was a, found, a, a great foundation, but I have seen a lot of entry-level SEO books since then, and, and, and I really like Chris's book um, as a way of both presenting the how-to but also showing you visually what things are supposed to look like, what you know what certain code is supposed to look like if you're if you're going to make your website optimized so um, that's kind of the one I've been recommending lately who knows it could it could always change in the future okay all right so um, if we jump right into contests let's um, why don't we do this you tell me if this would work let's look at what you did for your Christmas bacon giveaway and sort of dissect that and sort of help viewers help me understand how to put out a great contest. Now, I'm sure you learned a lot of lessons, like you only held yours for two days. Um, so well, bacon has a short shelf life, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> You're so funny, I love you. People are going to want a month old package of bacon. <laughs> so. 
Now, let, let me just uh, let me walk you through, I guess, um, you know, how it worked, why it worked for me, why, you know, it's, it, you've got to pick something that's, that you're going to get excited about giving away. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I realized. If a company were to give away a package of bacon, I don't know if they would have the same type of reaction or, uh, you know, if people would embrace it like, like I was fortunate to see. Um, really what... I guess there were three three things or, or three parts to uh, to what I did um, with the bacon contest. And, and keep in mind, I've never run a contest before. I just wanted to do it. I thought it'd be fun. I I know people like bacon, so I thought, hey, let's give away some some high quality bacon, right? <laughs> um, but the the planning part of the contest was to get as many people involved as possible in the planning of it. So I asked a lot of people for their opinions about. Bacon. Ultimately, I, you know, it, it seems like a small thing, but the more people you bring in um, in the planning stages and giving you feedback, especially if you take that feedback, those are people who are going to be that much more excited when you actually kick it off. Um, you know, getting people hyped up in, in advance and, and getting their feedback is just going to make them uh, much more willing to help promote you uh, um, when you actually do it. So I got some feedback. I ended up picking out a $5 package of bacon. It was on sale, normally $6, so, you know, it was good good for me. Um, I, I, I planned out all of, the, uh, all of the logistics as far as the contest rules. That's very important to make sure that you don't miss anything. You want to you figure out how long the contest is going to run for, how you enter, you know, how the winner is going to be selected, if there are going to be more chances for entry um, by doing other things. Um, you just want to try and event, prevent any weird loopholes for people to game the system. You want to prevent people from, you know, getting at each other's throats over your bacon. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect that was going to happen, but but it's always a risk, just depending upon what you offer. You want to make make it something that people are going to feel good about you and what you're doing. So, um, so I figured out all the logistics. I, I decided that if the person, you know, anyone could enter, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was open to everyone even though I have this package of bacon and that if the person was out of state I was just going to send them money for bacon instead of you know <laughs> the actual bacon right P pretty basic um, so we built a blog post around uh, around the contest I think that's really key is making sure it's not just sitting out in in the nether realms uh, as a contest but there's actually some text down on paper uh, that people can refer to that they can link to they can share um, uh, I think one of the most helpful things was that I tried to uh, to, pr to put up some some media around the the contest. I took some pictures of the bacon, tried to make it look sexy. Uh, you know, I even I did a, a video with with the bacon and had the Barry White song in the background. Um, you know, it just it, it, anything to uh, anything to make your your eyes look like you know like like it's the thing to have, right? Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful, and I def definitely recommend getting some some additional media. Make sure you've got pictures. You know, if you can do video, do it. I did that on my little you know point and shoot camera. Um, that it was low quality, but uh, I used Windows Movie Maker to uh, to just th splice a, a a song track in. Um, you know, along with the video, it, it it ended up you know it was low quality, but but it was fantastic. People loved it. Um, once the contest got going, so so the contest, um, all you had to do was just you know tweet about contest and and you got an entry right. Um, if you want an extra entry, you could comment on the blog post. So uh, and, and in the comment of the blog post, I think this was um, this was something that ended up being a huge for the promotion of the contest. Is um, the stipulation for the comment was that you had to comment in your comment you had to talk about. Two, two other people that you would theoretically share your bacon with because they're so awesome, right? So then once they, once they put that down, I then went and told those people that they had been, you know, deemed cool enough to share bacon with. <laughs> and, it, and it just got that, um, that much more excitement and brought more visibility to some people that, you know, wouldn't have heard about it otherwise. They got excited about it. I think that's a really good thing that I will make sure to do on future contests is make sure that if there is a comment requirement, that there's some way for me to take those comments and do something with them, mm -hmm. right? Whether that be tell more people about the contest, I think that's probably the best one. 
or uh, or something else that I can learn or something else that I can repackage, right? So that so that I can repromote the contest. So uh, so the contest ran for a couple of days. The other thing I did is I told people about the contest. I told a lot of people behind the scenes. Um, I followed up with the people whose help I had had. I even mentioned them in the post and thanked them, the people that gave me feedback. Um, I sent them messages. Uh, I, I messaged other people I knew would, um, you know, would think it was funny and enter, you know, with, with no problem. You just have a network of, of friends that you can rely on for things like that, and it ended up being really fun and and uh, and got a lot of people excited about it. Um, so as a result, contest ended. Uh, I filmed kind of the announcement um, rather than just saying, "Oh, so and so won." <laughs> uh, I I filmed a video announcement of it, you know, um, so that people would would come to the blog and have to watch the video rather than just saying, "Oh, there's the name." move on, but that was a way to get more traffic to the blog. Um, incidentally, I ended up being a girl from San Francisco, so I was just going to send her the money, so I actually did the video while I was cooking up the bacon, <laughs> you know, so I could see that. Um, and, the, and the cool thing was that she actually, uh, she actually came out um, for Christmas and was in town, and so we thought, well, heck, let's, let's get everyone together and eat bacon and, you know, present this I bought some new bacon and, and gave it to her, and so <laughs> it was the same old we, bacon uh, in your yeah. refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> no, she got a better bacon for sure. Um, so, and, and then we got together for breakfast. It was a lot of fun, um, and uh, and that was another way to to repromote. Is you know, even if you lost, hey, come join us for breakfast. Let's have <laughs> let's have bacon anyway. Um, you know, so so you can you, you don't just have to stick and and feel like you're confined to just the the contest. You can you know, turn it into, you know, transition into events, um, you know, more blog posts, more videos, pictures. I mean, you, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. I mean, she sent me pictures of when she was cooking the bacon. I, I, I need to do something with yeah, those and get those up. On your blog. Yeah. So, um, but, but overall, I mean, it was something so basic and yet because I was willing to get behind it with, you know, with enthusiasm a hundred percent and, mm-hmm. and kind of, played the cards right. Um, it, it ended up being a lot, a lot of fun. And the weird thing that came out of it is that now all of a sudden I'm like the bacon guy. Right? <laughs> bacon, bacon gets mentioned around me a lot. And they're like, oh, we should have some bacon with that, right, Scott? And right. and the funny thing is, is I never liked bacon. I, I'm not a, <laughs> not a huge bacon person, honestly. I just knew people like bacon. But now it's it's kind of, it, it can be a branding ploy for you too, um, just depending upon what you give away. You you know so so take that into consideration when you're decide, deciding what the prize is going to be because it will have other repercussions on your on your image right right so right okay so but, um, I want to look at specific things about your contest but my first question to you is a lot of people whether I guess especially if it's a personal contest um, you you're afraid no one's going to comment and then if you if you're a business and you actually run a contest and nobody comments, that's really embarrassing. So how did you get over that fear? Is it because you're like, you know what, I'm just going to work it and I'm going to just keep telling people and keep <laughs> driving the traffic? Or um, was it only two days and you're like, if I don't get any comments, it's just going to be a small blip and no one's going to notice. What? Let's give us some tips. You know, like if a business puts their name on the line and says, okay, we're going to do this, how can we not embarrass ourselves? What can they do? What are your three tips for? Is it the time is it the giveaway is it is it the back of the scene stuff okay so um, if, if I have to give like the, the key takeaways the key tips is first of all make sure you give away something that people actually want okay. I see a lot of contests that that give away a prize that nobody's interested in um, you know tech products electronics are always going to be popular okay. um, if it's something other than tech or um, you, you just kind of have to expect that the response is going to be in proportion to the value of and the demand for the product you give away. So, you know, you can do all the promotion in the world, and if it's for something very low end, you know, that people could just go out and buy themselves anyway, mm-hmm. uh, then then you you can't you can't pin high expectations to something like that. So, um, so make sure you're giving something that that people want or that really really connects with with your audience and you know we'll, we'll be in high demand right so um, that that would be that would be one thing um, using the contest rules to fuel 
the contest promotion uh, is huge. I think that's that's going to be number two is um, make sure that whatever you're requiring people to do helps get the word out about your your own contest, right? Whether that be um, they, I mean, Zag uh, Zag protects um, you know electronic screens. They they make shield protectors, and uh, and what they did is re- required people to either tweet about the contest or post um, that they had entered on their Facebook page. So that means all the other Facebook fans are going to, um, or friends are going to see that. But, but, but things that per- perpetuate the promotion cycle are, are critical to getting the that a, a company is looking for. Um, I think those are probably the, the biggest ones. And then, um, and, and then I'd say that, the third is just do what you say you're going to do. So make sure that you have all of the details to the contest so there's not a lot of ambiguity. People, you know, you, you, people want to know exactly how the contest works. They, they want to have a complete understanding that, okay, this is how long it's going to go. Um, this is when it's going to be announced. This is when we're going to know. This, this is how I can improve my chance. And, and too often... Um, companies will leave out some information, make it ambiguous, or make uh, you know make it difficult for people to really know what what to expect. And then you know it, it just it kind of dies a slow, painful death that way. So um, hopefully that helps. Okay, but um, let's talk about that Zag. You're talking about their 12 Days of Christmas giveaway that they had. They did. So they, I mean, that's one thing that Zag had going for them is they gave away huge high-end products um, starting with the 12 days of Christmas you know all, I, I I don't remember every day I mean they were giving you know once they got to day four they gave away like four four hundred dollar best buy gift cards I mean that's not cheap right, right. Uh, they they at the end of it they gave away a uh, um, like an Apple computer worth a couple thousand dollars so um, and you had lots and lots of I mean that that added thousands, probably tens of thousands of entries just in those 12 days because, because the, the prizes were huge and it was all random. And, and a lot of people like the fact that they could win at random. Um, I don't like that myself. I like to have a little bit more say in, in whether I can win or not. But, um, but and, and then also the promotion, the re-promotion just based on how you had to repost it or retweet it to enter, uh, I think helped them. I, huge deal. I mean, more than anything, it was the fact that they were giving away multiple items. Maybe people were thinking psychologically that they had a better chance of winning, right? Because, oh, I've got, you know, four of these that I could possibly win. When really that just increased, uh, increased the number of participants, made it that more, that much more difficult. Okay. Now, I know I myself entered the Zag contest at least three days, and there were at least 12, I guess, 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> um, so my question is, since that contest, though, I've heard Zip from Zag. I mean, they have they have not sent me an email. I haven't gotten, um, I haven't gotten, I haven't been touched by them since that. So, what did it actually gain them for me or for anyone who did not win? I mean, the people that won are probably like raving, maniacal fans for them for life. But for those of us who didn't, what should what should Zag be doing now? Like, if you know, any business wants to continue that engagement or actually have it mean something, what's the next step? Right. Well, I think that that's a that's a great great point, Sherry. Um, when you decide to run a contest, and when part of your requirements is for people to follow you, whether it be a fan or a face, you know, a, a Twitter follower or whatever, that's your window of opportunity, right? right. So yeah. you have a captive audience. You stipulate that they have to stay following you until the end of the contest in order to uh, in order to win. That's your window of opportunity. That's when you should be putting out your best stuff. You should have some really good blog posts queued up. For that period, you should be putting out some really engaging content. And I think, especially for a small business owner or a blogger, your mentality is just keep this contest running. You're not you you, you get sidetracked and, and forget that hey, they're listening. What you know? What else is, am I doing to keep them even after the contest ends? Right. So um, so I, I I would advise someone to have some stuff queued up, um, have some stuff prepped and ready in the wings so that. You know, they might have entered. They know nothing about your company, but all of a sudden they start seeing some stuff that's oh, it's really high quality, and they're motivated to continue um, 
even after the fact, uh, stay friends. I, I know that Zag has probably lost a, a few followers since the contest, but by and large, I think they uh, they still retained most of those because they keep doing some giveaways, um, and, and they and they do have a product that, that applies to a lot of different people as well. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, I, I won a Zag shield just through uh, a Twitter contest they had. So now now I'm a fan, right? Because because I won and I'll. I'll stay following them, you know, so it, it, it's a, a great point. Okay, so um, before we talk about your SEO that you used for your contest, give me your thoughts um, on the platforms. Um, so you chose to do your on Twitter, right? Okay, instead of, you don't have a Facebook um, fan page, business page. Okay, so sure. that was out for you. Um, what do you think about contest that actually has an email opt-in so that you are then continued you have permission to continue to p touch those people and to send them blog posts and stuff like that because th the problem for me is like you know I will become someone's fan of their fan page but then I might never check their page again and I completely forget that they're there whereas if they have my email and I see their name enough times you know like there's that saying that you must touch someone you know what I mean seven to twelve times before they will like you, know you, trust you, buy from you. So do you have any tips on, you know, which platform or, or, or should every contest have an email opt-in? Um, you know, I, I certainly, I think it, it's different for every company on whether, whether you are going to be able to make, if you already have a really good email marketing system going, by all means, and if that's one of your strengths, use that. But if you are just trying to think, oh, how am I going to retain people longer and you don't have an email system in place and you want to start that up at the same time you're starting your contest, it, you know, unless, unless you're lucky, you're, you're probably not going to be that successful. Um, I think most people are already accustomed and familiar to the, to the idea of entering either through Twitter or Facebook or through a blog. Uh, I, I think that's really common. Even YouTube, you know, through YouTube comments can be really common. And I'm not saying that email is a bad idea. I'm just saying, you know, make sure that that's a strength and that it's something you're, where you're going to be able to put out some quality content. I think most people do Twitter and Facebook contests because the expectations are so low, right? Okay. You know, what I'm tweeting or what I'm posting is always going to be short. Whereas if I'm sending out a newsletter, that all, all of a sudden takes uh, um, a much bigger piece of significance or if I'm putting some promotion out there on, uh, through email. Um, that uh, the the expectation is a lot higher. That that's going to have some substance to it, and, and be valuable. So, I it, it, I think it's one of those things where it just depends on what you're already set up with. Okay. So the um, I'm looking at your um, contest um, title. Was it um, Christmas? What was it? I lost it. Oh, the ultimate bacon contest. And then the keyword tags that you used were bacon. Barry White, Contest, Social Media, and Twitter. So tell us why you chose those, you know, because there's that whole debate now on how long your keyword phrase needs to be versus, you know, a single word. Tell me why you chose those tags and what was your strategy for that? Okay, so from an SEO perspective, um, depending upon how long, you have to kind of recognize that SEO is, is a little bit longer term um, strategy for marketing then and may not apply to to promotions from my perspective I thought about doing SEO um, for my contest but it honestly didn't greatly impact the uh, the, the amount of participation I'll, t I'll tell you why so um, really it's it's a two-day contest if you know depending upon what you put in your uh, in your title or in your content it may not get picked up by search engines till after the contest is even over. And you also have to, to recognize that the only people that are going to be impacted by you showing up in search engines are people who are searching for contests, right? They're used to, uh, to trying to game the system. That's, that's what they do. So it may not even be the type of people that you even want to attract. Um, what I do think is better, uh, better to know about SEO is as it relates to social media optimization. One one thing it's good to understand is how Facebook um, how Facebook works and the concept that um, if you post something that is going to become more visible in other people's 
streams and timelines if that piece of content has more likes and more comments on it. So, um, so you you know you can you can think about it a few different ways. For example, as I'm I'm entering a contest right now and trying to get people to vote up some of my stuff so I can win something. Um, so I'm going to get so so my plan is to get people to post about you know and help me get uh, help me win the contest on their Facebook walls. But not only that, but to leave comments and likes on different people's posts who have posted to help me just to keep that up at the top. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So so strategically, that's probably a bigger um, thing where SEO or, or search engine optimization, even you know Facebook's a search engine really. Um, the way it displays things is an algorithm. So, so there are things to learn from that. But if you do want to kind of get a little bit more visibility, make sure you have things that are words that are common with contests. So you want to have contests. You want to have giveaway. You want to make sure the dates in there. You want to make sure you've got um, what you're giving away. Um, you know, words like win and prize. Uh, they're they're all good to have as far as um, you know, effectively reaching a, a search engine mark. Uh, market if uh, if you're sticking around that long. So if if it's going to be in, anything longer than a few days, then then sure you can look at something like that. Okay. So what do you? I mean, my my my. Go ahead. I was just going to say my contest is very well optimized for the term bacon contest, but how many people do you have searching for bacon contest? <laughs> <laughs> and why did you? Throw... Nobody. So it's 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 kind of on issue. Why did you throw Barry White in there? What was that connection? That that has very little to do with SEO as much as it is to uh, to to remind people that the bacon was sexy. So <laughs> I, I wanted to you know make the uh, make the very white connection mentally. Okay, so um, I just got an email from a local uh, luxury car dealership in town, and they were giving away um, I think it was football tickets. Um, and ground transportation to the event and what you had to do was send them a video or some sort of um, blog post on why you liked them so much and then you got more points for how many people liked your um, comment on Facebook or um, added a comment so you you suggest that route based on what you were saying uh, earlier yeah I think well uh, that that's one way to uh... Uh, definitely, as far as winning that type of contest, I think that mm -hmm. can help. Um, you're talking about Mini Cooper, right? And, yes. and tickets to the Super Bowl, right? Yes. So that's a huge, big ticket item right there. Um, it, it's it's a great prize. You know that tons of people are going to want it. Um, as I look through some of the requirements for that contest, I noticed that it's it's confusing um, it as far as the as far as what you're being asked to do and exactly how it works. And how you can win. I think you you have to show up to an event just to see if you won. You um, so the people who are going to really uh, go for something like that are the people who are going to be willing to travel for it. And and you have to recognize that you're going to get fewer entrants because of that limitation. Mm -hmm. Even while you might be pulling more entrants for the huge big tickets, uh, you know, Super Bowl tickets, right? So there there. Are, Every element to your contest is either going to get more people or push people away. That's kind of how you have to uh, how you have to look at it. Right, and that's exactly why I did not enter that contest was because I'm not. I'm like, well, I don't think I'm going to go there because then I'll want to look at a car and then I might try to want to buy a car that I really shouldn't be buying at this point. You know, it's like I understand the psychology of why they did it, but I thought they kind of the contest in my mind wasn't successful because it didn't motivate me to actually engage with them and to visit. So tell me, because you and I were talking earlier, um, because you've entered so many contests, what is it, like within five seconds probably, you can determine if a contest, you're not doing it. What are some major turnoffs that, um, like, you know, you just hate about contests now? Um, honestly, I stay completely away from, from you know, mom blog <laughs> contests, okay. Okay. right? <laughs> It's a gigantic. Well, first of all, it's a little weird for me entering a mom blog contest. You know, the the, the sheer number of women, is, you know, just kind of makes it uncomfortable. I've kind of gotten over that, right? <laughs> for the sake of winning, I'll I'll, I'll push past my uh, 
you know, my awkwardness. But um, I, I avoid most of those. You know, the the competition is so high, you already can tell visually that there are 300 entrants. I'm not – if I want to win something and, and have the best chance, I'm not looking at, at a contest, anything over 10 entrants, at least uh, when I enter. Um, or you know, I, I'll let I'll enter a contest with more entries if it's if if it's the type of contest where I have some a little bit of control over whether I get or whether I win or not. So for example, if I have to write a creative comment on a blog post, well then I feel like I've got a little bit better shot than the average person because I'm going to put a little bit more time, a little bit more creative effort into it. So you know, I, I might enter a contest that's got you know 20 or 30 entries, right? So. I, I'm staying steering clear away from things that either require me to do a ton of stuff or have or I know there's just going to be way too much competition. That's kind of I mean that's unfortunately that's that it means I leave a lot of contests on the table I don't enter, right? Just because mm -hmm. the time it takes to enter is just not not worth it. I've got better things to do. Okay. And um let's talk for a second about the contest that you're currently um trying to win. Is that okay? <laughs> Yeah, by the by the time your uh, your video goes uh, goes up and is over, it's um, you know the contest I'm I'm entering for. I'm trying to win an iPod for my wife, and in this contest, basically, I I think I was really good at the company. The company is um, is is called Milk Drinking Cow, and they make um, they make iPhone apps that superimpose an animal. Um, on an, on a picture as you take it. So it's a photography app, and you just have to upload the picture taken with their app and try and get more people to uh, to like your picture on Facebook than anyone else's. Um, so that's been going for, for a few days. The contest ends on Monday, and, and right now I'm in second place. Now, keep in mind, most of the time, I'm not going to be entering something uh, like that. I'll tell you how I found that contest, though. Um, I was searching for contests, and uh, and I um, and sometimes it's helpful if you if you decide mentally what you want to win first and actually search for contests based on that. I thought, oh, I really would like to win an iPod Touch, so I went in search of iPod Touch contests. I found several of them. I found one of those where I thought, oh, well, the 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 num the amount of competition at least at that point was pretty low. I thought I can do this, even though it's something out of the ordinary what I use what I usually do um, you know it, it, it seemed like the thing that I was w type of thing I was willing to put some some time and effort behind so um, yeah right right now the competition's playing dirty and I've got to pull some pull some stops and pull out the big guns but um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes down but but we're gonna have some uh, some mass mobilization to try and make it happen okay so that that's really so. what I want to talk about is um, you have had a little bit of um, how, what's the word you would use with this other person that's also trying to win this same prize? So, um, you know, without going into too much detail, let's just say the contest was not necessarily set up in the best way. Um, you've got some people that are going to put a lot of time and effort into trying to win and promote their contest, which means you are going to have some emotion mm -hmm. and and. Unfortunately, Fortunately, it means that sometimes it can, it, you know, it can get unprofessional in, in, in the things that are said to both sides. Um, and, and so that's one thing I recommend we, we stay away from when we're in classes. You know, try and picture the end from the beginning, right? What is this going to lead to? Is, is Yeah, this might get you a lot of fans. Is this going to create enemies? Is this going to leave people with some bad feelings and that's going to transfer to what how they feel about your company when they think of your company they're going to think oh that was that company that ran the contest that you know there were lots of hurt feelings about right so um, yeah it's it's something that you're going to have to deal with if, if you're running a competition that requires people to vote for for each other and, and you know there are going to be eventual losers right it's, it's, Usually, I think for a small business, you'd want to avoid the the type of setup that's going to uh, to bring about negativity in that way. But what is it that happened in this contest that allowed for that? How was it set up that that, that you and this other person were were having a little bit of a dialogue that, and she kind of went out of bounds with it? What what was it that created that? Oh um, no, I I don't think it's that uh, that important to dwell on it. 
um, it, it just came from the fact that you know me and my side want to win, and and her and her side want to win, and you know, and and, and things get posted trying to dissuade the other side to uh, to change votes. Then all of a sudden, that uh, that that's kind of where where the line uh, got got crossed. And then you know, when you start making personal attacks, like. Um, you know, she started making some against me, calling me unethical, and and, and that was sad for me. I, you know, it, it's it's not the type of thing I want to have happen. Mm -hmm. But my real question is: Is there any way that the company could have set up the contest a little bit differently that would have prevented that? No. Well, I think well, well what ended up happening is a lot of the so, so the negative comments got removed by the administrator. Um, you know, on, on the Facebook page, they could have avoided it up front just by laying some ground rules about what is and what isn't acceptable. Um, you know, had they done that up front, I think we would have completely avoided this issue. We would have avoided some of the some of the hate, you know, speech that that took place. It, it just would have been a much more positive outcome. So, so great point that that's something that could have been avoided just by having more rules up front about what is acceptable contest behavior. Okay, All right. what is. It's like, you know, like what, what blog comments are acceptable for a lot of blogs. Right. Okay. Right. That's something I didn't even think to do on my own bacon contest, but, you know, it's something that I, that I could have done, but I didn't think that it was going to cause too much, uh, too much malice. Yeah. yeah. Although bacon, I mean, that you, <laughs> you, you <laughs> either love it or hate it. Yeah. That's right. So, um, do you have, um, like if I say, what is the worst contest you've ever seen? Does something jump to mind? Oh, it definitely does. Worst contest I've ever seen um, was definitely done by Dunkin' Donuts. I was going to say that one. Okay. That's that's oh, so so awful. So Dunkin' Donuts, in order to win, and it was you know a very low, I think maybe a gift card or something, maybe like a five dollar gift card. You had to go to their store. You had to take a picture of a poster or something with your camera. You had to text that to a phone number that they had. They would then. Uh, email or, or send you back a trivia question, then you had to find the answer to the trivia question, send it back to them, and then that entered you for a chance to be one of, you know, one person to win right, right, <laughs> per right. day. Like, just way overboard as far as expectations uh, when compared with, with what you were um, answering. One other one does come to mind, too, um, and that was just one that I saw recently where uh, a lady was giving away a book in order to have a chance to win that book, um, you had to go buy one of her other books and like show her the, you know, the the proof of, of purchase for that. Wow. And, and to me, that seems kind of uh, uh, ridiculous in, in terms of expectations. I think mm -hmm. you should always couple your, um, you know, your prize with what you expect people to do. You don't want to make it too little, but at the same time, you don't want to make it take too much for people to enter or they won't. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, did I tell you I was going to ask you to give us an assignment? Oh yes, and this assignment, uh, this assignment is, is, um, is going to bring so much happiness and joy into your little <laughs> heart that, uh, that, that, you know, there's, there's not much else for me to say. What, what your assignment is, is to give something away. Now, We've, we've gone through a bunch of tips of, of do's and don'ts, um, but I think that that's the best place to start. Pick something small, pick something fun, pick something that you can get behind um, and, and do all of the prep work for it. Go through the motions of you know, planning it out, planning out your rules, um, putting up con you know, content to announce it, and, uh, and then following through with, with, the own, with your own promotion of the contest. Keep in mind that if you haven't done a contest before, this is going to be a fantastic learning experience for you to see what are you comfortable with as far as your level of excitement and promotion, how your particular audience is going to respond to, um, to a product, and also just to see what comes out of it for you. Um, you know, in, in the case of my baking contest, it, it was great. I mean, it, was, it, it took a little bit of time, sure, but... Um, but it helped in that I met a lot of new people. I got more, you know, Twitter followers, which is something weird. I, I didn't expect to necessarily get that. I thought just my friends would enter. Mm -hmm. I ended up 
getting some links to my blog, which is going to help um, in, in SEO value. I ended up making people happy. I think you know it's it's good to to just have a, a solid reputation of being a fun, you know, positive person. So and and to be a positive, fun company too. So that's your assignment. Pick something you want to give away. Do the planning for it. Give it away. Make it fun, and then document what you did so that you can recreate the successes and and um, you know forget the failures the next time you do it. So that's uh, that that's your challenge for this week. I, I'm anxious. I'm anxious to uh, to see what happen because I, I want to win more contests. <laughs> okay, so I have to hold one, but so does anybody who's watching this video. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I would actually love it if they would comment on um, my blog. Um, I'll, I'll post all this on my blog and hopefully we'll get some comments of people that said, yes, I got something. But what if they say, I didn't get any comments. What do you suggest they do? It's, it's okay, right, to tell people about, to say, why don't you come on over and look at my contest. It's not, it's okay to beg for people to come. They don't just have to find you. You can tell them about it, right? Absolutely. I mean, one of the funniest things is business owners don't consider themselves marketers in, in many respects. That they're uncomfortable uh, with self-promotion. Um, you know, if you're giving something away, what is? Th th there's not a lot of self-promotion to it. You you are contributing. You are providing something that people can get excited about. I think the other thing I mentioned earlier about getting people involved in the planning process for your contest makes it that much easier. That's something that's very comfortable for someone to do is just ask people's opinions on what they should do for their contest. So then when the contest kicks off, you already have a bunch of people that are invested in the success and outcome of the contest. Great. Okay. Now I did promise people that if they sat through this video, <laughs> that you would tell them your three big tips on how to win contests. And I've been trying to get you to write an ebook, Scott, and you refuse. So give us your top three ah. tips here now, so we can all start all doing right. some competition. I'm I'm giving away the farm. I'm I'm uh, <laughs> this 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 officially ends my contest winning winning days. It's uh, you know it's it's a long time coming. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, that's that's right. Okay, so I'll t I'll tell you that I I I look for contests categorically. So I look for certain types of contests that I could win. I mentioned a little bit earlier um, the types of contests I look for. I look for low uh, entry contests, right? So um, I know that generally speaking, uh, contests held on blogs are going to be lower entry than contests held on company pages. So I will search for um, contest related keywords, um, you know, whether that be contest, giveaway, things like that, coupled with the date, you know, so if it's January right now, I'm going to, I'm only 2011 stuff. I don't want to find uh, stuff from other days. I'm going to look specifically for um, contests on like blogger blogs or, um, you know, Blogspot or, or WordPress because those are all going to be blogs um, where people, are, are gen generally speaking, they're starting out. They haven't invested enough money into their blogging in order to change it over to an ac actual domain name. Right. So that's something I just know from from SEO. And so, um, you know, if, if I search for contest there, then then generally speaking, they're going to have fewer entries. I can also search specifically for uh, for low entry contests by searching for you know keywords related to the number of comments they have. I might search you know to find th those specific keywords and the date and stuff and then you know search for two comments or you know three comments and quotation marks um, those kind of combinations will will bring back results of, of pages that have not been touched too much so that's one way to go about is look for low entry contests or look for contests with with semi low entries where you have a better chance of winning um, just by what you say because they're not it's not going to be drawn at random they're going to pick the winner and so if you are creative, if you're funny, if you do a longer response, those are all three factors that uh, that contribute to be, you being picked uh, um, among a crowd. Uh, some other stuff I look for are recurring contests. So uh, one thing I noticed on Twitter is that there are a lot of companies that do a contest every Tuesday or every Wednesday hmm. or every you know Friday. So what I find 
and I searches for those and just get them on my radar so that I know, okay, it's this day. I know I know I can go over here for a contest. And, and ultimately, it's kind of a numbers game where the more contests you enter, the more likelihood there's going to be for you winning at, at some point. So that's something I found um, found to be pretty easy to do. And then the one where, where honestly I win the most contests are in speed contests where it's like trivia related and, and I've got to be the fastest person to post on Facebook, the fastest person to reply. All I'm doing there is I know how to use Twitter search operators, get, get familiar with those, and I know what kinds of things companies are posting to announce those types of contests so then I can easily search for, for just those types of speed contests, categorically speaking, and have a much better shot um, at winning them. If they come across my radar, I'm going to be really quick about responding to them. Those, those have really paid off uh, recently. So that's, that's kind of, uh, th those are th three of the biggest, easiest types of contests to win. I saw, I, I saw a contest um, recently where they, they wanted you to guess where this certain picture was taken right, so it had a picture of, of some unusual landmark. You had to guess where it was taken. You know, first person to uh, to comment and, and find the answer. Well, you, you use a website like Tin Eye T I N E Y E dot com that does a reverse image search. All you do is just upload that image to Tin Eye, and it tells you where else that image is posted, and you you find an easy answer that that way. So just becoming familiar with some of the tools associated with different types of contests and just get, uh, that's uh you know that that's usually how how um how I go about it. Well the other thing that I will mention also um just just to just to cap it off is decide what you want to win, right? So in, in my case I like you know I like to win books. Um I, I look specifically for book contests just because I really like to read read, I really like to learn. So I'll look and type in specific keywords related to book contests, find that often those tend to have fewer entries hmm. than, than your average electronic item. So, um, so it just depends. Sometimes, sometimes you'll end up winning contests with really lousy prizes and you'll just laugh about it, you know, uh, but, but you can, uh, you know, just keeping your eyes open and knowing what to look for is, is just as helpful as, as the entry itself. Okay. So um, the last question, and I, I should have thrown this in earlier, is um, are there contest softwares that you would recommend for small businesses to use or just manually put it together? I mean, I know there's a lot of free ones that you can use on Facebook, but there are also, um, I just made a, a note here, Wildfire, Contest Burner, and Artistic Hub are some that you actually have to pay for, but they can make it look really nice and they can make sure it runs well. But do you have a favorite? Have you tried any of those? I've seen Wildfire uh, used most frequently by companies at very low cost. You know, you're talking a couple of dollars a day to run that, but they make it very easy in that they give you, um, you know, forms to where you can easily, um, you know, enter via Facebook uh, through Wildfire. I honestly haven't played um, with, with a lot of contest apps. If you're talking um, bigger tickets, contests where you really want to do not only do good management of the contest but also capture a lot of data um, for later use I know that there are, there are good companies out there that that, um, that do that other other software systems uh, strutta s t r u t t a is one that uh, many companies use for some of those bigger ones where they not only want to run a good contest but they want to capture a lot of of information about the people that are entering philosophy behind running a contest is keep it going. Don't just give something away. Don't buy your fans. Don't buy your followers. Um, continue with that engagement so that it becomes real, so that those people who are first stumble upon you um, and then maybe maybe win something from you. And if they don't win something from you, give them another chance. Maybe it's just a free thing, but you know what? Thank yeah, you so maybe much. it's a promotion. Yes. It's a count. Right. Yes, and I, I think a lot of times, you know, I see contests and it's just, that's it, and then it drops the ball. Or someone will say, oh, we got, you know, 6,000 new fans on our Facebook. Great, what have you done with them since? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, okay, so it's, you know, and I know you agree with this, social media is all about 
the connection and the conversation and keeping that conversation going. So if you're just going to have a contest just to prove, you know, that, oh, I can get X number of followers in the next week or whatever, I don't see the value in that because it doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's taking that and continuing that conversation. So is there anything else that you would like to add before we close? No, just make sure you uh, plan contests that I can win. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm going to do a Tooth Fairy book contest since I've written a Tooth Fairy book, um, and you're about to have a Bambino, and <laughs> I know you will win because, you know, hey. Um, is there any other plug you want to give for SEO.com, that great company that you work for? No, um, we, do have, we do have a lot of small business solutions for SEO, so even, even some of the smallest companies we've got some great, uh, great um, SEO packages for, so um, you're welcome to contact me through Sherry. Um, you know, or or just get on our website seo.com and um, love to uh, love to chat. Well, thank you so much, Scott, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you, Sherry.